Hello everyone, Andre here. This video is going to be a little different than what you usually see on my channel. And that's because I got the brand new Apple Silicon M1 uh, Mac Mini here. And I'm going to be sharing my experience with this device as a regular user and as a music producer. Because this is the focus of this video, is the experience of a music producer with this new machine. I've seen a lot of tests uh, and comparisons on YouTube already, but most of them, if not all of them, mainly talk about kind of like the performance difference between like the previous generation uh, Intel-based uh, chips and, and the new M1 chip. And those didn't really resonate with me or give me like a good idea of what to expect of or what my experience would be like with, with the new machine. Um, so I decided to just go ahead and like, you know, I bought it with my own money and now I'm just testing it and kind of like sharing my, my experience so far and the roadblocks that I've ran into. I'm an Ableton user and for now, Ableton does not run natively on, on the M1 chip. It runs through the emulator, the Rosetta 2 emulator and I want to see what it's like to install Ableton from scratch and then which plugins that are not native to to Apple, like any third-party plug plugins, which ones work, which ones don't, if there's any quirks or crashes that I experience, and yeah, just kind of like share share what it's like so then you can make your own decision and see if this is something you want to invest in right now or Perhaps you should hold off and, you know, wait till there's more things that are compatible with the new chip. So, yeah, without further ado, let's uh, let's dive right in and I'll show you a little bit what I've been doing so far and my experience so far. So um, my audio interface is uh, the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 and the Focusrite control software was running perfectly fine. I installed it with no issues. Everything is working as expected. All of my uh, inputs, outputs loaded just fine, just the way I have it configured. So far, no issues in that regard. So if you're a Focusrite Scarlet user, I think you should be good. And then here I have uh, Ableton Live 10 uh, suite running. Again, installation was a breeze didn't encounter any any issues so far i have a push 2 which is connected via a double seven port usb hub that's daisy chained and it's all connected via one cable to the mac mini just a regular usb cable um, that was one of my main concerns too to see if if that was going to be compatible and if it's going to work or not but again so far uh, no issues with that uh, as well um, I have my uh, my push to here uh, just a, a, a drum a drum rack here just something that comes with Ableton works works just fine no issues there as well uh, also tried like a quick max for life LFO device you know just map it to like the panning and as you can see just panning left and right. It's, it's working just fine. Again, no issues here. I also have uh, a third-party plugin called Lie uh, by Expressive E. It's uh, a companion synth that comes with this um, Touche device. It's kind of like a MIDI controller that allows you to control uh, like four dimensions of parameters. So here, for example, if I play something um, you can hear that different, different sound that you can make by just moving your hand on this device. It's pretty cool. So, um, both of those as well, the hardware piece and the software piece, um, work as expected, no quirks, no issues with that. So that was that was pretty good. And then I also loaded Pigments by Arturia. 
and that also worked just fine. Um, obviously, I'm not going to use my uh, activation here, just going to run it in demo mode for the purpose of this video. And yeah, this also works as expected. No issues here. Pretty fast. I, I, I like it. Anyway, um, so, so far these are the things that I've tested and these are the things that work. So again, um, anything by Arturia, uh, including the Arturia Software Center, that's how you like install all your, all your Arturia uh, plugins and, and synthesizers. All of that was working just fine with the M1 chip on, on Big Sur. Uh, pretty sure it's version 11. Yes, version 11. Um, and uh, Lie by Expressive E works, ju works just fine. And also all of the hardware that I've tested, which is the, the Touche and the Push 2, had no issues so far. The, the one thing that I found really weird is that if you go to the MIDI section, of the preferences in Ableton, my audio interface does not show up here. So basically I lost the ability to send MIDI out, out of my interface to, to all of my hardware devices, which is a pretty big deal for someone like me that uses a lot of hardware synths. Um, I basically can't send any MIDI notes, can't sync or clock anything. That's a, a deal breaker for me personally. If you don't use like MIDI out of your, of your interface, then you know not something you should be worrying about. But again, I'm not 100% sure if this is specific related to uh, Big Sur or the M1 chip or if it's like a quirk in my audio interface specifically. If I load the same exact setup on my MacBook Pro from last year with the Intel chip. Uh, it works flawlessly. I can see my Scarlett 18i20 here and I can um, track and sync the, the MIDI outs and send MIDI to all of my external hardware gear. So that's something to keep in mind. Another big uh, issue that I found is that none of native instruments stuff are currently supported. And you can even see it on their um, on their main website here. Uh, it says, at the moment, native instruments products are not supported on computers while uh, Apple Silicon processors. So it's not specific to Big Sur. This is specific to M1. They have a, a separate compatibility of products with Big Sur, which you can check out here, because you can load Big Sur on like an Intel-based uh, computer. So um, the problem with this is that I have uh, a MIDI controller keyboard by uh, by Native Instruments, the Complete Control S49 MK2, the Limited Black Keys Edition, which I love. Uh, it does not work. You cannot use any of the built-in features. You cannot use um, Complete Control, which is kind of like this um, collection of all of your Native Instruments devices um, in one single application which allows you to preview all of your samples all, all of your synthesizers um, manipulate the different parameters on the fly everything from the keyboard um, you basically cannot do that right now uh, again uh, another big uh, deal breaker if you're a native instruments user if you have any hardware from uh, from native instruments you cannot use that right now it's simply not supported um, but you can still use it as a regular MIDI controller via USB. That works just fine. As you saw, I was playing some other uh, third-party instruments using the keyboard as, as the MIDI controller. Uh, one more thing. As I was editing, I forgot that I did not mention that. Um, 
since native instruments is not supported, like the native axis would not even load at all on the M1, that means that if you have any plugins that use the contact player by native instruments, those would not be usable until native instruments updates their uh, their stuff to be supported. So for example, anything by output will not work. The only thing that would work is their uh, effect engines, uh, portal, thermal, and movement. Those would work because they're standalone. They're not, uh, you don't install them via native access. Uh, it's They just on its own and they work just fine. But anything else like signal, um, substance, uh, analog uh, bass and brass, analog strings, exhale, rev, all of those, including all the expansions, those will not work. And I know there's a lot of software synthesizers out there that rely on contact player. Like that's how you load them and use them. So keep in mind, those will also not work. Another thing that is not supported right now is anything by Isotope. It will be probably, you know, uh, my guess Q1 of next year. Uh, that's kind of like the trend across the board that I've noticed uh, from like the all the major synth manufacturers. Um, looks like Q1, maybe Q2 of next year is when they're gonna start releasing the updated versions uh, that are compatible with with M1 or like or with Big Sur. So just my recommendation would be to um, follow or check the, the official help center or official docs of the specific software instruments that you are using and then stay up to date that way to see uh, when they will be updating or releasing some updates in that regard. Um, so yeah, Isotope does not work right now. Uh, anything by native instruments does not work. And also um, anything by waves looks like is not supported right now. Um, as you can see right here, Apple, Apple M1 uh, processors are not yet supported. Um, that being said, um, I managed to install the Waves Central and it did load my uh, all of my plugins, but I could not test it because you can only transfer license between computers like once a year. Um, and I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get stuck and not be able to use my, my plugins. So um, here, as you can see, like I installed like the Brawler Motion and, and the Kaleidoscope and the OVOX. Um, but again, it, it, it got installed, but I can't test if it actually works or not because I need to transfer the license and I'm not going to do that right now. So, you know, it could work, but... I can't tell you for sure, so just, you know, your mileage may vary. <laughs> okay, so my biggest takeaway uh, for now is if you're an Ableton user or if you're using any any software that is not made by Apple, just wait for now. Do not upgrade to the new M1 chip. There's just too much of in incompatibility and too much of just unknowns in the air something works something doesn't sometimes it crashes sometimes it works just fine i don't know for me personally i like stability and i just like to plug and play right like literally i if i sit down to be productive and to create music i don't want to be dealing with errors or like something just crashes or that stops working and you know if there's like plugins or or some piece of software that i'm relying on for my daily uh, workflow S all of a sudden it's not supported or I have to wait for for drivers or updates it just kills the creativity it kills my workflow and I, I don't like that I'm a big tech nerd I like new stuff new technology but when it comes to s things like that it's just better to wait if you're a, a logic user and that's all you use like please go ahead uh, use the new machine you will see a dramatic increase in performance based on what I've seen I'm not a logic user so I can't tell you uh, my personal opinion on that um, I am an Ableton user though and for now like there's just too many things that are not 
um, not supported that I use on a daily basis. So again, I think we all should just wait a little bit uh, and see where and how this evolves. We will see a lot of performance increase once all the all the software and all the DAWs and all the plugins um, are compatible and recompiled to run natively on the M1 chip. It will be like a huge performance boost. Like I know it for a fact. When it will happen though, nobody knows because there's so many variables and it dependent on so many different things and manufacturers. So my guess would be probably like towards the, the end of next year, maybe like Q3, Q4, we'll start seeing like more and more things and updates coming out uh, that allow you to be, to use everything like natively on the new chips. And hopefully by then, like a, a better like M2 version or something will come out. The MacBook Pro 16 will, is probably going to be equipped with a faster Apple chip. Like who knows, you know, like it, the road is only up from here, which is exciting. But, you know, for now, this is Gen 1. So we just need to to be a little bit more patient and just keep yourself updated um, through the official websites on the specific synthesizers or software that, that you're using to see once, you know, once they release the updated version. So hopefully this was helpful. If you're in the market for a new machine, I would like to hear from you and kind of like see what your experience been like so far, whether you're an Ab Ableton user, Logic user, Bitwig, Cubase, Reason, doesn't matter. I, I want to hear about your experience with the new chip and kind of like what things that you found that work or don't work. And, you know, let me know in the comments below. Let's let's have a conversation about it. Um, you know, it will help a lot of people because everybody is kind of like monitoring this space right now. So, yeah, have a good one.